This is Pastor Rick Lauterbach, pastor for Walnut Grove Baptist Church in Irvington, Kentucky. And today I'm doing a, a study on being transformed or being conformed. I, I will tell you that you're being conformed to something. Every single last one of us is being conformed to the image of something. You know, I, I, I've seen in, in, in my age now where I'm looking more and more like my daddy did as I remember him. As the years pile on, I'm beginning to look more and more like him. There's some things that look a lot like him and some things that look not exactly like him. But I'm being conformed to that as I grow older and older. But there's a sense at which we are all being conformed to something. And we're either being conformed to the image of Christ or to the image of the man of rebellion. It's one or the other. Really, there, There's really not any middle ground. There's really no place for... Uh, this idea where I, I want to be just saved enough to slide in the door of heaven, but I don't want to be transformed. I, I don't want to be really, really obedient. I, I, I just want to. I just want to be saved enough to slide in. Well, the Bible knows nothing about that. It, it, it knows about a progressive sanctification, and, and that progressive sanctification speaks of a growing holiness. So, therefore, that growing holiness is a, a growing likeness to Christ. Now, holiness is a funny thing. There are people who think, well, holiness is all about what I wear on the outside. Absolutely not. In fact, the words that have to do with conformity will help us to understand that. We're gonna, I'm going to give you three texts. Romans 8.29, Romans 12.2, and Philippians 3.10. There's either the word conformed or a word that has to do with being conformed or conformity. And in those, those words, in each one of those, those passages, we're going to see the idea of being conformed to something. And there's two kinds of being conformed. There's the inward conforming that takes place in Romans 8.29 and Philippians 3.10. And then there's this outward conforming in a, in a transitory way that, that is talking about that's being spoken of in, in Romans 12.2. Now we'll get a little more detail into that uh, here in a little bit. But in the meantime, you, you and I need to talk about being conformed and transformed. I'm either being conformed to the image of Christ or I'm not. But I'm being conformed to something. I, I, I'm beginning to look like something. And it's, again, this is not an outward appearance. This is an inward appearance. It, it, it just tickles me to death when some of these guys will, they, they will go and they, they, they'll grow out their hair and they'll grow a beard saying, say, I'm being conformed to the image of, of Jesus. Well, you're confusing Nazarene and Nazarite. The Nazarite vow is, is the one where they don't cut the hair and grow out the beard. He likely had a beard, but whether or not he had long hair or not, we simply just don't know. And the, the likelihood that you and I physically look like him is not particularly good. Um, other than um, as a male, I look similar to him in, in some very generic ways. But what the Bible is after and what I'm after in this study is, is the conforming to Christ in a moral in a moral way in a, in, a, in the way of righteousness now he's perfectly righteous and you and I aren't we have a perfect righteousness having to do with our justification and that's had by faith in Christ it's his righteousness given to me before the council of God and without that then I'm not a Christian but then there's that that transitioning that that conforming that has to do with being made holy by the, the work of, of the Holy Spirit that's that's the business he's in is, is in the business of making the saint, and, and a saint is, is simply just a converted person. It's not a special order of, of converted person. It's just every single converted person is, is considered by the scriptures, and therefore by God, to be a saint. All the saints are being conformed to the image of Christ. That, that's, what, that, that, that's what Romans 8.29 is going to tell us. So let's, let's go ahead and take a look at Romans 8.29. For those whom he, and the he is God, the, for those whom he foreknew, he also predestined. Predestined for what? So many get bent about this word predestined. Don't get too worried about that. In the end, we're being predestined. God is, is predestining us, predestinating us to be conformed. Conformed to the image of his son. You're being predestined, if you're a believer today, you're being predestined to the image of Christ. Again, this is not an outward appearance. This is an inward appearance. This is inwardly like him, morally like him. A righteousness that is growing in, in, the, in the direction of his righteousness, which, of course, was perfect. He, he had no sin. He who knew no sin was made sin for us by the Father. Right? He died on a cross, perfectly righteous, for those who are not perfectly righteous. You and I, are, we're just filled with sin. That doesn't mean that we can't, 
can't walk in a way that is righteous and we should be, we're not sinless, but we should be sinning less. But then that's part of the deal. You and I are to be conformed to this image of Christ. God has predestined us to be conformed to the likeness of Christ in order that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. What that's saying is, is Jesus as the elder brother has given us an image and, and, and through the power of the Holy Spirit, you and I are to be conformed, transformed into that image of Christ. That, that God has called us to that. That it's absolutely the work of the Holy Spirit to see you and I changed from one thing, from the from a, from a fallen man uh, in the image of Adam to the image of the second Adam, that is the perfect Adam, Christ. Now let's look now at Romans 12 too. So we're still in the book of Romans 12 too. Is, is, there, there's a word there, it says conformed again, but it's conformed differently. That, that first one in, in, in Romans 8.29 was the word uh, somorphos. And somorphos means having the same form as another, con, conformed to... Or uh, of the conformity of the children of God, it has to do with that. It has to do with an inward, an inward changing. We're to grow into Christ and up into Christ, and and to grow into faith, right? Grow like Him, grow into our likeness to Him. Sometimes people simply don't want to grow up into Jesus, and that's exactly what they're supposed to do. In fact, Paul gets on on some of the churches for for their being baby still when they should have been should have been growing in Christ. They're, they're still needing the milk when they should be need, when they should be eating meat. There's a time to grow up, and, and it's no longer okay. It, just imagine a man walking around middle aged wearing a diaper. You know, he, he doesn't want to bother with being an adult and, and, and walking around clothed as an adult, but instead he wants to be a baby. But that's really what what Paul has in mind. And there are many who call themselves Christians who are in that estate. They they just simply will not grow up in likeness to Christ. And yet they should be. And in fact, I'm going to tell you that they're, they're, they're doing what Romans 12.2 says not to do. <clears throat> it says there in Romans 12.2, do not, do not be conformed. Now that word conformed there, that, that, Greek, word has, that Greek word has to do with it. it. It's stressing an outward conforming, an outward uh, conforming to the image of, of the world. It says do not be conformed to this world. Now when it says that, it, this world has to do with that world that resists a holy, a holy God, that resists being transformed in, into a righteous saint. And again, saints are simply those people following after Christ. It's every disciple of Christ is a saint of God. Do not be conformed to this world, but, now that's important that Paul puts that there, but be transformed. So he's saying, don't be conformed to the lost image of the first Adam, but be instead transformed to the image of the second Adam, to the, to the one who is morally perfect, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. Now, I think that's really where it starts. Your thinking. You, you must change your thinking if you would change your direction. Because in the direction your mind goes is the direction everything else is going to go. So if you're thinking in ways contrary to the scriptures, you need to change those. You need to alter those. They need to be transformed. You need to transform your thinking so that you might transform your direction. So it really does start there. It starts in the mind. It starts in the heart. It starts in the soul. And then the outward parts start to act with the inward condition. And that's really what this work is all about. So you're to be transformed by the renewal of your mind that by testing you may, dis may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Now, all that means is that through practice you begin to grow in righteousness as you're practicing your righteousness. And, and, and the thing is, is God is gracious and he doesn't show us our sin all at one time because I simply think it would overwhelm us and, and we would mourn ourselves right to the grave. But God being gracious shows you your sin a little at a time and lets you move in that direction of, of holiness. Little by little through the power, not of your own, but through the power of the Holy Spirit indwelling you. And, and you see those sins and you, you desire not to have those any longer. You, you desire to be to be like the the elder son. You desire to be like the holy one. And, and ultimately, we're not to be conformed to the image of, of death, but instead to the to the son of of life and light. That is to Jesus. Now let's take a look over in Philippians chapter three, verse ten, which says, Paul speaking, and he says that I may know him. 
and the power of his resurrection. That's a powerful word right there. And may share his sufferings, becoming like him in his death. Paul's trying in every way to become like Christ, even in his death. You and I are to be transformed, conformed by the renewing of our mind through the, through the washing of the regeneration of the word and through the inward working of the spirit to this image of Christ all the way to our death. And here's the really great news. At death, God takes you to that state where he will give you what's known as glorification. That doesn't mean you're, you're made godlike. It means that you're separated from your sin entirely. And then you will spend all eternity in this, this, this condition of perfect righteousness. So let me get back to this idea of, of conform. You are either being conformed to the man of rebellion or conformed to the image of the perfect son. Now, we all know that that, that, that person who we thought, well, he, he's perfect. Well, actually, that's untrue of every one of us, with the exception of Jesus. And you and I are to be conformed to him. And that only happens through the work of the Holy Spirit. And, and, and the way you do that is through the reading of scriptures. That's the Bible. Through prayer, through church attendance, through Bible study, through fellowships, through all these things. What you're doing is you're giving the Holy Spirit traction to, to get into your life and, and to make you something you could never make yourself. It's absolutely impossible for you to do what the Holy Spirit does. But the Holy Spirit does this great work, and he's happy to do it, but you have to give him something to work with. You have to, you have to be a student of the Scriptures. You're to be a man, a woman of the, of the Word. You're to be a man and woman of, of prayer. You're to be a man or, or, or a woman who, who attends church regularly. And by regularly, that really does mean more often than many people think. We're not to forsake the assembling, as is the manner of some. But what that really means is we're to be regularly in the house of God. We're to be like the psalmist who says, I can't wait to get back in the, in the, in, in the house of prayer. I can't wait to be back in worship with, the, with my brothers and sisters in Christ. I can't wait for that. My soul pants like the deer pants for water. At this time of separation we're in right now with, this, with the COVID-19 stuff. Has, has kept some people away from church. And, and one of my great fears is they've gotten used to it. And when, when the restrictions are lifted, they won't be ready to come back to church. Instead, they'll be conformed to the image of rebellion. Because one of the greatest sins in this day and age is the desire for personal autonomy. The idea of personal autonomy is really madness. It's, it's really chaos. And there's so many in this, in, in this particular country, in the United States, where we think personal autonomy is my right as a United States citizen. Well, no, it's not. As a follower of Christ, I simply give up my, my, my right to do that, but instead I, I, I am in obedience to Christ in, in the power of the Spirit, walking in a direction of being conformed to the image of the perfect Son. You and I are, are to continually be... The, the idea of sanctification is this growing, this kind of arcing righteousness. It, it, it's to be increasing. It, it, it doesn't... It, there are times where we have what's known as dry seasons. Everybody has it. You, you see that when you cut a tree down. You'll see big rings and little tight rings. Great growth in some places and small growth in other places. Your life is like that. But we ought never do it purposely. We ought always to seek to grow in likeness to Christ. Now, in the end, you're faced with a choice. Am I to be conformed to the, to, to the image of the, the rebel? Or am I to be conformed, transformed, if you will, to, to the image of the blessed Son? The one who always did that which pleased his Father. So you and I ought to seek to do that. You and I will never be sinless, but we should be, of course, sinning less. And we should desire to be like Christ. Now, you can't die for sinners because you're a sinner and you, you, you can't offer enough sacrifice to finally get there and, and be able to offer sacrifice that God will receive. But what you can do is live a life of righteousness that, that the redeemed and the unredeemed see and that God is glorified in and, and that God makes use of See, see, God's desire is to make you holy that he can bring you into his presence. We're being conformed that we might spend an eternity with a holy God. Now, holiness sometimes scares us. It ought not do that. It, it is a bit different. It's, it's different from what we're used to. It's different from my original estate. And, and, and the natural man can't 
perceive those things which are spiritually discerned. And then the natural man has no concept of holiness. He thinks it's about his outward appearance, whether he cuts his hair this way, that way, or whether he wears this clothing or that clothing. And, and it, there are clothes that are better to wear than others, having to do with the idea of, of being humble. But really, too much is made of that. Because in the end, what the Bible is after is a, is a conforming an inward man. The growing up inside, inside my mind, inside my heart, inside my understanding, being conformed to the image of Christ. My desire is to be like Jesus in every way. And I don't hold on to anything that gets in the way of that. And neither should you. You and I should all seek to be more and more like Christ. So let me ask you a question as we try to draw near, near to the end. What are you being conformed to? Everybody's being conformed to something. Every action you take, you're conforming to something. You're either being more conformed to the image of Christ or, or less conformed to the image of Christ because of every single choice. You have many choices to make. Not all to send you in a direction of being more conformed to Christ, more likeness to Jesus. He is, in fact, the, the image that you and I are to, to, to bear more and more as we walk with him. And, and really, again, you, you have to give yourself to the means of grace. Those things that God provides that he might give the Holy Spirit traction in your life to make you holy. God bless you. You have a great day.